Hello there, just so you know, this video contains a paid promotion. Don't worry, I'll never promote something that I don't think is worthwhile and I'll never mislead you about the quality of a product or service. Enjoy! Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart. Today we're taking a look at how to put vector characters inside of a photograph or any raster environment really. We're going to be creating this little doggo here, maybe a different character, who knows, and we're going to put them inside this photograph and uh, justify this reaction from whatever gift this girl is getting. Uh, this video is sponsored by um, Storyblocks. They're a really good resource and stock image site. They've got over 400,000 images, I think, um, all of which are part of the membership. And then there are some on top if you want to pay for additional stuff that you can get up to 60% off on, which is quite cool. Um, they are giving away a free seven day trial at storyblocks.com forward slash YouTube. And you can download everything your heart could desire from their member library, which is quite cool. So make sure you go and check that out. But let's just dive right into the tutorial then. First thing you're gonna to want to do is load up your Photoshop, your photograph, sorry, inside of Illustrator. Um, and we're gonna create our character on top of it. Um, so essentially, you're not gonna actually be exporting this image from Illustrator. You're just gonna be using it as a base to create whatever it is that you want to draw. Um, I did a dog last time. Let's do something different this time. So go ahead and grab your ellipse tool and I'm just gonna draw pretty much a perfect circle and pick a nice blue color. That'll stand out nicely on our page. Maybe something like that. Yeah, that looks okay. Um, and this is gonna be the base for our character. So feel free to follow along here, but obviously if you wanna do your own thing with your own stock photograph, then that is always what I encourage, uh, not to copy, but to learn for yourself. Um, so I'm gonna fast forward a few uh, through a few of these bits here, um, just because you've seen me do this before, and I'll drop in and out um, if there's any sort of difficult bits or things that are worthy of note. Um, if you aren't familiar with Illustrator, then I recommend you go and check out my intro to Illustrator series, which in which I'll explain everything that I'm doing here, but it's basically sort of basic shape manipulation. So I'm just gonna dive right in and I'll see you on the other side. So here you can see I'm using the basic shape tools, um, just circles and ellipses at the moment to create the eyes of our character. Um, very simple sort of stuff going on here. With the mouth, it's just a deformed circle, uh, which I apply sort of a dark reddish color to and a tongue. Then using the Pathfinder tool, I intersect them so that it overlaps. Uh, lots of little rounded rectangles make up all the teeth, which I just duplicate across the mouth. And then again, using the uh, merge option, this time I believe um, I remove all the sections I don't need and align them with the mouth nice and simple a um, little bit of repositioning and swapping out the colors of the eyes and probably a few of you among the audiences can start to see what this character is going to be um, for those who haven't I recommend watching a good show called Rick and Morty. You'll probably love it. A couple of half ellipses for the eyebrows um, and one more or three more rather stretched and deformed to create a little tuft of hair around the back. Uh, for the body, two ellipses, one large, one small, and connecting them with some smooth lines in between to create that sort of pear body shape. Uh, I took a bit of liberties there. And then applying a slight gradient on it um, to create the shadow underneath the Meeseek's neck. Uh, here's a good technique. If you draw a straight line with two anchor points, you can then use the direct selection tool to curve it and that gets you a perfectly smooth curve. Um, outlining that and again, turning it into a gradient for both arms. Then just a uh, quick speech bubble made of a circle and a polygon tool um, with some text in it just to finish off the piece. Uh, I think I also add a little bit of a drop shadow at the end as well. And that is it. We are ready to drop back in and put this guy in our photograph. Okay, so welcome back. Bit different than a dog, I know, but I like him. Um, so we've now drawn our vector character um, and he's sitting in the scene, but you can see that his belly sort of overlaps the box a little bit. Um, you can also see that this box is slightly out of focus so that we're gonna need to allow that onto the character as well. Now you could do all this directly within Illustrator, but I find it's not really worth it. Um, you can do it a lot quicker and easier within Photoshop. Uh, you also get better exports for the image quality behind it and things like that. So what we're gonna do, is we're going to make sure to grab every single part of our character 
we're going to pop over to the assets export window, which if you don't have, you can get from underneath the window sub menu. And we're going to drag this whole selection over to the asset export and name it something. OK, then we're going to make sure we're exporting in the right format. Now, PDF is totally fine. Um, you can also add things like a PNG uh, or a JPEG, um, but PDF is obviously vector based, so we're not going to lose any quality if we have to scale and move this around. So I'm just going to hit export, pop it in a folder and it's going to run off. Uh, OK, so the first thing we need to do now is pop over to Photoshop and open up our image and I'm just going to drag it in. You can see I've done it a couple of times before. And if you drag it in like that, it creates a um, canvas that is automatically the properties that you need. Then just grab your um, MeSeeks PDF or whatever your one is and drag that over as well. Make sure it's selected as page. Um, crop to bounding box is fine. Hit OK. This will drop your um, character in. It's quite small. You're going to have to rescale and position it back into place. Um, but the good opportunity of this is it means you can sort of reposition it however you like. So it looks a bit better. I'm going to say something like that. OK, so I'm happy with the size and position of that now. I just need to do two things. I need to make him go inside of the box uh, and make him look like he's sort of grounded in the scene a little bit more. So that's quite easy to do. The first thing we're going to do is grab our quick mask tool down here, add layer mask and do so. Then just zoom in. I'm holding alt there and using the scroll wheel to zoom in. Um, and we're going to go down to opacity and change the opacity of the layer so it's see through a bit more. Then we're simply going to find the edge of the box here and create a uh, path to act as our mask. So we're going to go to the edge of the path like so and like so, and then just quickly draw around the rest of his body that we want to hide. OK, right click there, choose make selection and make sure you feather the radius a little bit because you can see where this is slightly out of focus. Um, that's going to be interpreted as feather for the mask and as blur for when we get to that later on. So I'm going to say somewhere between two and three pixels is OK for this one and hit OK. Then I'm going to grab my brush tool with B, make sure it's black. And I'm just going to start painting away here. And you can see that where we've feathered when we hit Control D, the edge of this um, line is now soft. So if I bring the opacity back up here, you can see it's got a bit of a soft line. Now that isn't perfectly lined up, so we can just reposition that if we wanted to, like so. OK, and once you zoom out, he looks fairly grounded. Now, the angle's a little bit off, so I'm just going to fix that because it becomes more blurred along here. So I'm just going to take this and rotate it ever so slightly and just reposition him deeper, like so. OK, good. So the next step then is to uh, if we add a little bit of a drop shadow behind him, um, then he'll look more grounded in the scene. If we go down to drop shadow like so and make sure that it's a nice loose one, that's pretty much all right already, actually. So it looks like he's casting a little bit of a shadow onto the scene, which is good. And then we're going to add a little bit of a shadow on the uh, inner of him as well. And to do that, if you just control click on the thumbnail of this image, you will create a selection around here. Then when you create a new layer, you can start just painting directly into this. So we're going to grab this dark blue like so. And on a nice blurry brush, we're just going to start painting. Maybe in a larger format. Like so, just to add a bit more shadow. Maybe a bit darker. Like that. OK, perfect. Happy with that. Uh, then hit Control D. And this time, come on and click the mask and apply a layer mask. There we go. And that's just added a little bit of shadow to his belly. So it looks like he's coming out of the box just a little bit more. Um, and that is pretty much it. There is one more thing we could do if you really wanted to. If you put both of those layers into a folder and then duplicate that folder with Control uh, J or Command J if you're on a Mac, you can then rasterize this layer or merge the group. And that gives you a raster version of the entire selection. OK, and what this allows you to do is you can go in and using the blur tool, you can then start to uh, adjust the vector drawing, which is now a raster drawing um, individually and manually to account for things like the um, focus blur of the camera and things like that. So we'll just blur 
him down here a little bit because that bit's a touch out of focus. We know that. And then when we come back up, like so, it's a subtle touch, but it really does add a lot. Uh, and that is all there is to it. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate it. I will once again just plug Storyblocks. So thanks for them to, for providing these images. And if you go to storyblocks.com forward slash YouTube, uh, you can get a free seven day trial with those guys. So check it out if that's what you're into. Um, and I will hopefully see you all next time on TikTok. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.